All right, welcome to the Green New Deal, Red Square. So um, we are facing a massive environmental crisis. I don't think this needs to be, um, I, I think there's plenty of evidence for that. Uh, as we as we just found as we just found out uh, today, it's going to be you know freezing for the next three days. And again, ERCOT is is uh, not sure if we're going to have rolling outages. So that's lovely. This is a new feature um, of our of our world. This is part of kind of the climate chaos associated with climate change. So nothing surprising here. Uh, here are just some headlines that kind of illustrate that. Um, we, uh, there's some new ones that, uh, I, that I've added onto the bottom that are a little bit more recent, including uh, COP26 uh, ended in failure and disappointment, which I know there were a few highlights, but definitely didn't achieve very much, uh, even though that it's, you know, again, these one of these like big international meetings where they're supposed to try and work this out and then they can't. Um, and then, uh, a nice headline on what was intended to be one of the signature um, environmental legislation pieces of the current administration, uh, Joe Biden's Build Back Better plan, which included his uh, arguable, but what was being pitched as the main uh, environmental uh, subsidies and, and schemes in, of his administration. And it was killed by a guy who has uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in money from coal. So you couldn't get anything more um, both ironic and indicative of American political economy and capitalism than that whole charade. So we're in a crisis and the, the, the leaders of the major parties and of the uh, economic elite are not really fixing it. Um, what do we do instead? What we're looking at in in uh, DSA as part of the Green New Deal campaign. And, and a couple of things to start with this. I think a lot of folks in here kind of are familiar with kind of the Green New Deal general concept and general campaign. The real focus is like unifying labor um, and the socialist movement around pushing for um, uh, heavy investment in green union jobs, in public power, and in an array of things to basically build an eco-socialist framework for our economy. It's a huge initiative. It's a huge, every formulation, DSA's formulation, AOC's and the, and the, and the bill, enormous amount of policies and programs are associated with it. Uh, you know, sometimes I say it's, 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 it's so wide you could drive an electric bus through it, right? Like there's a lot of stuff in, in the Green New Deal framework. So as Twan's saying, it's, it's sort of big and abstract. How do we make this concrete? Um, we're, we know we're going to be working on pushing for this for the next decade, two decades, however long it takes. Because if we don't do this, there's no, there's no other option. We have to do this. Um, so how do we make this concrete? Uh, what's our theory of power? What's our theory of, of, of movement building where we can try and start realizing these things? Uh, we nationally have focused a lot in DSA on public schools uh, as, a major as a major plank here um, because it's, they're really strategic for socialist climate organizing and labor organizing. Uh, it helps us build a very strong social base. Schools are something that are very important to many, to, to their communities, to working class communities. Um, there are public schools everywhere. Uh, it's something that can be applied across the country in any city, any state, uh, focusing on schools and school, um, school, school decarbonization. Um, labor, the labor element is really strong in the schools sector. Uh, you, uh, there are mo most schools have uh, like this. The education sector has of the of the union rates in America. It's still one of the highest union rates of, of any sector. Right? So there are well established teachers unions. They have a pretty decent amount of political strength, and so it's a really good way to tie in to both um, existing unions and build up rank and file advocacy and agitation inside those unions. Um, DSA is uniquely positioned to build democratically run organizing structure capable of creating and exercising this kind of militant working class power. So, you know, that's, that's really the, the DSA framework of how we try and build organizing towards uh, achieving these things. Um, 
And public school workforce is also disproportionately female, uh, people of color led, and school reliant communities are disproportionately um, uh, communities of color, uh, working class and lower income, especially as uh, a lot of the country has been, public school districts have been hollowed out by private schools and charter schools. So they're very strategic. Schools are a really strategic site. They're things that people understand that they, that they get. That they that most working class people value, especially their local schools, the schools they went to, the schools their kids go to, and trying to make them better for their for their kids, for students, for teachers is something that they can understand. And not to say that people can't understand things, but like it it, it relates organically to people in a way that kind of big abstract visions about you know global uh, global summits doesn't. Um, so that's that's one of the, that, that's sort of the general framework for why DSA nationally is focusing on the school site still as a major site for uh, looking at the Green New Deal and socialist organizing. A little bit of recap of what we've done so what's happened so far, both uh, locally and nationally. Um, this is like a national. This is a you know, we've been doing local things, but it's it's a national campaign where chapters around the country are doing Green New Deal work of, of a similar sort. Um, the first real push last year, as Greg mentioned, was this PRO Act campaign. Uh, if folks want to talk about the PRO Act more later, we can. But basically, it would be one of the best, um, it would be the biggest, like, pro-union legislation in, I don't know, like 40, 50 years to pass. And, we, and it's something that... Um, the labor movement was really focused on uh, trying to get passed and to get uh, supported last year. Um, the framework for doing that wound up being putting it into the um, putting it into the uh, Build Back Better legislation, which seemed like a good approach at the time. But oh well, uh, leave it to Biden to disappoint you. But um, anyway, in terms of the DSA approach. We did or, we used we did organizing like Greg said, um, made thousands of calls. I think it was like what was it a million calls, um, but enormous number of phone calls, and wound up flipping two senators, including Joe Manchin, uh, into signing on to this legislation, which is wild. It's fucking wild. So um, that's kind of a important thing to really think about. Um, and some, let's see. Oh, sorry, that was that's what the slide was about. Um, yeah, a million calls through phone banks, flip two senators, major flex. Uh, one of the main unions we worked with, and that's IUPAT, which is the painters union. Really awesome. Uh, other unions were involved, like CWA, and it, it's something that all the all the labor movement was behind. Um, locally, we uh, a lot of our uh, folks participated in those calls. Uh, and and really got on the leaderboards for doing those advocacy calls. Uh, we also held a rally with local unions. It was really successful. Um, uh, could have been bigger, obviously, but it was also in the middle of COVID stuff. So uh, it was really great. It was also like, I think the first time I like saw people in, in person in months. So it was really awesome. Um, following that, following the PRO Act uh, campaign, there was a shift um, again nationally to go for go for public schools. So greener deal for public schools focused. Um, the goal the goal there was uh, was a bill that was introduced to put over 1.4 trillion in uh, over 10 years for high needs public schools to go into infrastructure, um, human infrastructure and physical infrastructure. So capital grants to fund kind of all the like kind of the building. Uh, stuff, the, uh, the HVAC systems, screen retrofits, uh, better insulation, basically building our schools up to like an environmental standard for the 21st century, which most of them around the country are not. Um, and then um, additionally to that, um, hundreds of billions of dollars for expanded staff, social service training, and targeted funding for Title I and IDEA schools. Uh, basically to try and equalize the public school system of the country, bring everybody um, to, to, to a good level with that level of support. Um, really visionary, uh, really visionary goal. DSA was, was very involved in helping craft that. Um, and 
wound up not really, maybe I shouldn't have written it this way. I was just feeling pissy when I said it, but we, uh, we got it in the initial draft to build back better. Uh, not, not all of it, obviously we got uh, 82 billion, which is, you know, for three or four months of, of organizing 82 billion ain't bad, but uh, that was in the first drafts of build back better the, even though I got um, cut out of what I call the cowards version, which still didn't pass anyway. So fuck them for even doing that. Um, but uh, for Austin DSA, we did canvases and we held a rally uh, targeting key neighborhoods uh, around several schools in uh, East Austin. Uh, good participation and just like glowing reception from folks in the neighborhoods. Like I said, like people get this, people want schools to be better. Um, uh, rally was really awesome. We had folks from Education Austin speak, some really inspiring stuff that we still have videos of. And uh, the, the target was to get Doggett, uh, who, was the, who was the congressman who hadn't signed on at the time, to sign on through this. And like, basically it worked better than we anticipated because by the second rally, he had like heard that this was happening and like called up and begged to be put on the, put, uh, put on as a co-sponsor for the bill. So, um, so that, that happens pretty fast. So all in all, it was sort of a, it was a fairly positive experience. Would have been more positive had they actually passed the legislation, but that is beyond our purview. So what's next is really talking about, um, was it a bad move when I wrote some of this? Yeah, Dems got it, then failed to pass build back better, but there's still opportunities to push Green New Deal for public schools at the state and local levels. That's where we're looking at now, and that's where a lot of other chapters are looking now looking at state at uh, ways to push at the state and local levels we're starting to develop a campaign uh like a renewed campaign uh to the membership we're going to bring that forward next month as the target um and that's going to be focused on union climate jobs and november school bonds so basically you know the way school public schools often fund their their infrastructure and physical building stuff is, is have is have bonds that are put out to the community and, and people in this, people who live in the school district have to vote to approve them. So uh, we're working with groups now to, who are going to be pushing for basically kind of like a Green New Deal version uh, in the bonds. So uh, heavy focus on union jobs, uh, HVAC improvements and getting, and getting schools solar ready. But so like unionized green jobs all day long. And so, that's going to be kind of the next step in the campaign probably for us um, for this year. Uh, tactics in that are, probably are going to include things like pressuring school boards and school board committees that are like making budgets and making bond plans, uh, speaking at meetings along the same lines, and then canvassing and get out the vote in the, in the fall. So similar to kind of what we did last fall, but, um, but with the clear target of a bond election. So, you know, going to the door, making calls, getting people behind us so that the bond sells through. And we have a really strong mandate for union green jobs and can really kind of, again, like really solidify the tie between union jobs and green jobs in, in Austin. Um, next steps for folks here. Um, you know, we'll, we can keep talking more about this and just talk about any aspects of the Green New Deal you want to get into after this. But in terms of like practical steps, what we're going to be looking for next is uh, we're going to have that campaign resolution ready to go for uh, probably March. So whenever that happens, we're going to be sharing that around to the chapter. Uh, we'll need people to sign on to, to uh, approve that and then vote for the resolution to make it camp to renew the campaign. So definitely get involved in that. Then, you know, we want people to be involved in the campaign itself. Uh, we're going to be pressuring school boards, like I said, earlier on in the year, probably kind of the, between the April, June timeframe. And then later on in the summer and fall, there'll be like uh, lots of canvassing potential and opportunities and other sorts of like um, uh, organizing like that, like uh, canvassing, block walking, phone banking, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, uh, that's kind of the rundown of what, what we've done and what we're going to be doing.